So since everybody asked for it, apparently I'm supposed to review refrigerators. We're here at an undisclosed location to look at a wide selection of refrigerators and see what I think about them. And we figured we'd do this now in the car, just in case they have a bit of opposition to us doing this. 2700, it's these fancy pants whiz bang jabbers. That's pretty nice. It's got a good hand feel to it. That's the important thing you're looking for. It's a flex zone dividery thing that does all kinds of tilty flippies. Look at that technology, huh? It's the latest in refrigerator, freezer, separation technology. And it's lockable. Oh my God. What is this, a bloom or something? Looks like an LG, but it says Hisense. Oh, it's got the water in the door, exactly like an LG. Yeah, it might be Hisense, I don't know. I don't know if they actually manufacture these things or not. You know, there's not a lot of variance on these things. They're all built in effectively the same manner. They all seem to use white lithium grease for lubricant in these slides. It does give you a nice feel, but I guess that's uh, not a lot of options you can get for a commercially viable lubricant in a freezer section. This seems like a very thin gasket on this unit. Maybe that's typical. Oh, look at that door rigidity, you see that? Terrible. I don't know, I think it needs a little work. They have this entire slot up here on the top, so you could grab it from either side. Look at this, see that? That's absurd. What is this, a $30 lawnmower? $1,400 fridge here. I do like the water in the door, that's pretty fancy. It improves the thermal efficiency because then you don't need a big, big cut out in the door for the ice and water dispenser in there. Now you don't obviously get the ice in the door, but at least you get the water on the inside. Hook that up to an RO system, Bob's your uncle. They always seem to use the same plastics in all these different ones, I guess. Again, not a lot of commercially viable options for economical fabrication, but these seem okay. Probably be brittle in 20 years though, but hey, what are you gonna do? I don't particularly like the um, filter location. The aesthetic design on that is not stellar. I don't, know, I don't wanna break it. I don't know how you remove it. Seems like turning's involved, but it's real stiff. And we move over to the fancy Whizbang LG here. It's got the double door, cause fancy. You put your Gatorade and your jars of jam in there. Yeah, it's got the exact same drawer holder things as the Hisense, same pattern design. Seems a little sus that they're branding it as Hisense, even though it looks exactly like an LG, but I don't know what they got going on over there. This is pretty nice, the aesthetic design on that sticker. I think it's above average, at least for that segment. This doesn't make a lot of sense though, the accessibility of this. I don't know, it seems to leave a lot to be desired. I guess that's the, uh, the feature you get when you get this double door thing for the aesthetics, but it really seems like they just did that just to make it look cool and not actually enhance functionality. Yeah. It does look kind of cool though. Then you get this real big thickness there. Yeah, that is a lot. You don't want none of that. Oh, there we go. See, that's totally different. The Samsung, these weren't retained. So these are little things that when you lift this handle, it breaks the magnetic seal. And the Samsung, these floated. This actually pulls it back on this handle. That's a strange design decision. I don't know why they would not do it on one. I guess they don't need to, but they got a pretty nice design on the, uh, on the little roller slides on there. The door slides in nice. There we go. The value oriented model, apparently handles removed for that sleek installation. So these are classic. See it in like a studio apartment, maybe some sort of economical situation. Oh yeah, mm, you could feel the economy. You know, I think I saw this fridge in the episode of The Wire. Mm -hmm. Mother it seems okay. It's strange how big a color variation there is from these different things. This is like a, a protective film, okay. That's strange that they assemble it like that because it's very difficult to remove that protective film, but I guess it's economical, so they decide screw it, let the customer deal with it. I'm sure nobody ever ends up removing it. Very bad clarity in this plastics. Apparently the mold that they're using for this is well worn out, and that's actually a pretty big discrepancy here. On this fridge, you could tell that it's designed to be economical because this mold has a lot of wear on it. You could see it transferred onto this plastic material here. You can see all the scratches in the tool that's used to create it. And the other high-end fridges, you don't see that at all. So they must be much more uh, diligent about replacing the equipment and servicing the molds to make sure that it's in tip-top condition. Apparently it's a Whirlpool brand. Oh, that's a pretty nice drawer, no complaints. It seems like the formula is pretty well down though. A lot of these are pretty uniform. There's not a lot of creativity in refrigerator design these days. Plus you go to the Fancy Pants Whizbang European brands. It's a classic, but uh, modern design on it. Again, the fancy Whizbang shelving for performance. This one's actually plugged in so you can see the lighting, which is always nice. I find the Samsungs typically have a lot of flicker in the LED lighting and a little bit harsher color temperature. Color temperature on this one I think is a little bit too high for my taste, but um, some people prefer that it makes things look a little crisper and whiter. 
easy pulls on these. It's interesting how they change that so appreciably. So this is obviously a lower end fridge, relatively speaking, and they put these swoopy type large grab handles that you don't see on the high end fridges. High end fridges, the interior seems to be more about the aesthetics. Uh, typically LGs use linear inverter compressors. Some people complain they're buzzy, but meh. Look at that filter accessibility. Nice. Oh my God. Oh yeah, that's nice. That's nice filter accessibility. You could totally access that filter. Number one in customer satisfaction. That's what you want to see. Yeah, you want a lot of things on the door. That's like a priority in your refrigerators. You make sure there's a lot of stickers on the front door to advertise that it's like a good fridge or something. It's important, I guess. And they hide the energy tag on there. 56 to 66. So this is more or less in the median range for the uh, similar featured refrigerators. That's a pretty good accessibility. Oh, it comes with your little, presumably it's a blocker thing for your filter if you want to not use the filter or you have an auxiliary RO system. Look at that accessibility to that ice maker. They put a little shroud over that, but I guess it aids your servicing because presumably it's gonna have jams and whatnot. We got another high sense here. Look at the lighting on this thing, real weak. Look at how anemic that lighting is. Barely covers the fridge. You throw a pizza box in there, you won't be able to light anything underneath it. You need to have that side lighting like the LGs have. So when you get the pizza boxes jammed in top, you still get good light penetration to the various obstacles. Apparently you have to have the door well beyond 90 degrees to get this bottom drawer fully open. Terrible, they need to redesign this thing so this door actually opens. Oh my God. One end the rails are locked and their extent is limited and the other one, it doesn't seem to be the case. That's strange. I don't know, this doesn't seem to be as well thought out as the other brands. I'm sure it's a fine running unit, but it doesn't seem to be well dialed in. What do we got here? Frigidaire side by side. It's got the ice through the door. All the fancy wood thing features you're looking for. Got a good sound to it, real violent. Got a good looking auger system in there to agitate the ice. Nice chute design. Some of these have a lot of uh, choke points where stuff could get hung up and you get remnants and whatnot from the previous dispense hanging in there. You don't want none of that. That seems like a pretty good design. Damn, look at that lighting, huh? Yeah, bright and vibrant. Not a critical white temperature there. She's uh, pretty reasonable. You could have a pizza box in there and still get some light distribution. Pretty decent. So they put the light mid span in the freezer unit. Seems to be a reasonable spot if you're only out of one light. Two in the fridge, again, for your large pizza boxes. Look at that technology. Got the ice maker in the door. Look at the aesthetics on that. It's like a 70s Korea type look to it, but uh, aesthetically I do find that pleasant. Oh, shit. look at this innovation. In refrigerator water container apparatuses. Looks like the future. Self-filling watery thing in your fridge. I mean, that is, some advanced technology they got going on over there. Nice filter access, symmetrical. Oh, good ease of use. It's pretty nice, pretty nice. Oh, they put the controls over here. That's not terrible. Metal cooling, it's got the door and door without the window for the performance, presumably. Also with the tilty flippy thing. Yeah, mm-hmm. Yeah, that's pretty nice. I don't like the handle aesthetics though. And this is some sort of vinyl coating over the stainless, prone to damage, not stellar there. Well, I don't know if that was particularly exciting, but the kids requested it, so we figured we will comply. And if you're interested, we're gonna be doing a review of Tesla Model 3 in the future as well. So stay subscribed to see more content like that. There was a bit more constraints around the physical space than I would have expected. So might be a little limited in the quality of the content we can get out of that one, but Overall, it seems like most of the fridges are pretty uniform. They have a lot of similar features. They all more or less have the same design language. Really, the only standouts were the more modern features, that one Samsung that had the little water thing in the door, a pull-out, which is pretty cool. The LGs, on average, seem to be better value for the money and better apparent initial build quality. Uh, but I, I would say the Samsungs are a close second. But if you don't value aesthetics, and then I guess the, the Frigid Air or the GE seem to be a pretty good option too. Really just depends on what you value, I suppose. Overall, they pretty much have the same design, more or less, so it's... It's challenging to come up with a, a complex, thorough, detailed review in those things and uh, the, the time allotted. We're gonna be reviewing uh, Tesla Model 3 in the future. Me and uh, my brother Jason have one, so we've owned them for a little over a year now. Stay tuned to see more content like that. We're gonna try to have a bit more diversity in our content going forward. And uh, as always, let us know in the comments below if there's anything interesting you'd like us to cover. We'd be happy to try to cover it.